This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. I'm super grateful. I really, really am. Please do check us out on these alternative locations because YouTube can be a little sketchy. So far, so good, but you just never know. So it's a good idea to check us out on Rumble and BitChute and these other places. We're also on Odyssey, by the way, so if you want to check us out there, you can. And then, if you wouldn't mind, you might check your favorite podcast player to see if you can find the Gun Guy TV audio podcast. It comes out every month, and it's available on podcast players everywhere. By the way, we also have some new social media trying to get away from Twitter and the standard stuff and really support these new folks uh, who are doing some great things. So visit us there as well. Uh, or on Gun Guy TV Crew, if you like, we're on Locals and Patreon. So if you hate one, you can check us out on the other. The content is the same, and you can support the channel too. All right, I'm going to talk about this Franklin Arsenal Prep Center here for brass. And there's a million and one videos on this thing because it's very popular and it's popular for a reason. It really, really works. Well, as you can tell, I've been processing 223 brass here and Optics Planet was kind enough to send me this case prep center. It's been brilliant for this because it has stepped up my production level dramatically. And I could show you all the standard things that every video shows you. The fact that you can stand it up and use it this way, or you can use it that way, or you can adjust a feet, or it's got rubber feet, or the little tool compartment where the tools go, and the little chart that tells you how to set the thing up. I could set it all up and show you how to do it. And all I do is bore you to tears because I just show you the same stuff everybody else is showing you. So I'm not going to do it, okay? I hope you don't mind. I'm going to show you some interesting little tips about this thing. First of all, there is a second little tool set you can get that will help you remove the military crimps. It's very inexpensive. I found it and bought it and just throw your tools in the little thing here. And that way you can do that. I've run into a few military crimps in the process of doing this, as you might imagine, with all this 5.56.223 brass. But there are some other things that are interesting too. One thing's for sure, I've always believed in the use of templates to save time. Every video I've watched on this thing before I decided I wanted to get it, People take their, you know, they're using their micrometer, they're doing all this different stuff to get this thing set up. And I thought, why don't you just figure out one piece of brass and use it as a template? I grew up in the construction trades. So when I'm on a table saw or a shop saw or something, and I'm trying to cut 13 boards that are all five foot long, I cut the first one, use the rest and mark them and go. I just make a template. The same thing can be done with brass. And for years I've done that with my Lyman trimmer and other trimmers is just piece, one piece of brass, that's it. So this little piece of 223 brass right here is my 223 template. And you can see I put a big T on it. There, I'll hold it on the, on the, uh, the close-up cam here and see if you can see it. I put a little T on it for template and that goes in my template box. Well, now I, every time I wanna do anything with this brass, I've got a template for it. I got a template for 30 out 6, I got a template for 308, and so on, because I only had to figure out the trimmers once until I got the length I wanted to trim things. So that's one thing that makes things a little simpler. The other is get yourself a case length gauge. Now this one happens to be from Lyman, okay? And that way you don't have to try to trim every piece of brass. You're only trimming the pieces of brass that need to be trimmed. So once you get them deprimed and resized, and all that, and you tumble the lube off of them, and you put them in a tray, like this tray over here. This is all stuff that's ready to go. You got your trimmer, and you got where it's going. Another thing, quick thing. I'm going to put these things in. I'm going to put this, a link to these, in the description for you so you can find them. This is a brilliant little item. This is a glitter tray. I stole it from my wife <laughs> out of her, uh, her craft room. She went and bought another one, okay? Because <laughs> she said, what, what happened to my glitter tray? I said, well... It fits beautifully right there in the legs of my new trimmer, honey, and so it catches all of the brass shavings so that I don't have to clean them up afterwards. I'm lazy. Laziness, contrary to popular belief, is the mother of invention. And so I'm going to put a link to this little tray in case you get this trimmer and you get this little tray. It'll catch all your brass shavings. All right, let's trim some brass, shall we? First of all, 
This is set up for 223 right now, but I'm going to show you the quick and down and dirty, easy way to do it. Okay, so let's loosen it up. These threads are lefty tidy, righty loose, either the other way around. So I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to spin this out so that it's no longer set up. Now I've seen a few people say, look through the hole and see if you can figure out, you can see the brass start to touch the trimmer blades. Well, my eyes suck and I can't do that. So once I've got the collet that I need, and I've got the thing set up for 223 brass, which is really simple, so I'm not going to show you how to do it. If you just follow the directions, you're fine. I'm going to slide my template in there. Now I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to loosen this up so I can do it. I'm going to tighten it up until I kind of feel that the template, my template brass, hit the cutter. And once it does that, I'm going to know. Okay, there it is. I can feel it hitting the cutter now. So now I'm just going to hold it. I feel it. There it is. It's hitting the cutter. Yeah, it's hitting the cutter. So I'm going to back it off, back it off a bit more, back it off a bit more, and just keep backing it off till it's not touching the cutter anymore. I can turn the brass, and I feel like it's just freewheeling. It's not touching the cutter. Right there, it's not touching the cutter, okay? So now I'm going to tighten it down. And again, it's lefty tidy, righty loosey. It's the opposite of what you're used to. I'll check it again. It's not hitting the cutter. So that's all I'm going to use my template for. It gets me close. I'm going to put my template back in my template box. And that's what I'm going to use it for. Now I'm going to go find some brass that needs to be trimmed. Easy peasy. I'm going to take this piece of brass and put it in the case length gauge. Guess what? That one doesn't need to be trimmed. <laughs> this is what happens. You know, you go through them. I'll turn the trimmer on. You go through them and you go, okay, it doesn't need to be trimmed. Doesn't need to be trimmed. Doesn't need to be, that one doesn't need to be trimmed, although I would like to clean out the primer pocket and that other one I'll look for it in a little bit. You can clean out the primer pocket real quick. And when you find one that needs to be trimmed, which may take longer in this video than I thought, but you can see how much this thing speeds it up by just doing it this way, because I'm looking at these cases, they don't need to be trimmed. Why get a, a caliper out, uh, which I have a caliper, there it is. I got a couple of them, I got a digital one too. But why get a caliper out to check each piece of brass? Why not put it in a case link gauge and go, no, I don't need to trim that one. Sure saves a lot of time. And now you can bust through the process. Look at how many of them don't need to be trimmed. You're going to find, I've, I've been loading since 1978, I think. And you're going to find that the lion's share of your rifle brass doesn't need to be trimmed every time. And you're going to waste an awful lot of time trying to mic each one with a caliper because it just burns up time for nothing. So one way to save a little time is just check them as you go. And if they need to be trimmed, great. If they don't, clean out the primer pocket and throw it in the tray. And eventually, you're going to find one like that one that needs to be trimmed. Okay, fine. We know that one needs to be trimmed. We're going to push it in the collet until it goes through the shoulder guide, and we're going to trim it. Now, I will tell you, I have found that this trimmer is not the fastest at trimming. And at first, that kind of bothered me because it took a little bit to trim each case. It really kind of did it sort of slowly. But after a while, I got where I liked it. I started really taking tools and checking out, you know, is it a nice square, even cut? Um, am I finding any problems with the cut? I didn't find any. It squeaks a little bit, as you can tell, when it's cutting. I'm not putting pressure on it, really, just a little bit. You can hear it squeaking. And then you turn it a little bit to make sure it's a nice even cut. And once it's trimmed it, you're going to check it to see if your settings are right. This is the first case. So if you adjusted it too close, you're going to find out because you're going to have a case that's short. If you adjust it too far, you know, too, too far out, you're going to find it didn't trim it enough. And there you go. Now it's freewheeling. So now let's turn the trimmer off and see what we got. What I like to have is about 1755. Well, there you go. Okay, so I'll show it to the camera. Maybe I can show it to you. I'll take the brass out. What? There it is right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll have to look. That's 1756. I like to be at about 1755. I didn't have to make any adjustments once I put my template in there. I'm there. So how easy is that? Now what I might do is as I'm trimming them, I'll just check two or three cases in a row. Make sure that they're they're all consistent, which this thing has been just absolutely rock consistent. You can tell I've checked it a lot because I've done a lot of cases. 
and uh, and I've been super impressed with it. But as I as I said, the things that are going to make it faster and easier for you if you like this prep center, which I got to tell you, I really, really, really do, is adding a couple of things: a little tray to clean up the mess, which I'll put a link in the description for you, and whatever caliber you're using, pick up a case link gauge for that caliber. I know you can't see back here, but I have one for every caliber that I load specifically because it speeds up the process of knowing whether I want to trim a case or not. Just what happens, there's one I get to trim. Okay, and this one doesn't need a lot, but we'll check the link at length again once I get done trimming it and see if it's close. Okay, there you go. All right, let's check this one and see how close I am. Yep, it's not like Hollywood. We just do it on the fly here. That lined up properly. And uh, there you go. Let's see if I can hold it over there again so that you can see it. Same, same, pretty much. A little over 1756. There goes my phone going off. You know, the general idea is you want consistency with your brass and you want to be able to load it, uh, you want to be able to trim it easily and quickly so that you don't have a lot of hassles. That's the one that needs to be. Uh, Deburred, so I'm going to do it while I'm thinking about it because I'm going to forget otherwise. And if you're loading a lot of brass like I do because I shoot a lot, then you want to have an efficient system to do that that doesn't wear you out. And this has been absolutely brilliant. I've got a big tumbler tumbling brass to clean it. I come over here and deprime it and resize it and then tumble it in a little tumbler in here to knock the lube off. Throw it, in, uh, throw it in here and then move it from here to here and then it goes in a bag with a desiccant to keep the moisture out of it and it's getting set aside and marked. Easy peasy lemon squeezy and one of the things that makes it really really simple is this thing. I love this thing. So I got it from Optics Planet. Check them out. I'll put a link in the description. That's the Franklin Arsenal case prep center in, uh, in trimmer. Now, it, it works only with rifle cases. It's not going to work with pistol cases because it works off the shoulder. So if you do a ton of pistol cases and you feel like you want to trim those for some reason, I don't think I've trimmed a pistol case in probably 20 years or more, unless it's, you know, 44 Magnum or something. They tend to stretch out a little bit. But standard things, 9mm, 45, 38, I don't even check them anymore, let alone trim them, because I've never found the need for it. Occasionally, maybe, if you shoot them a lot. But this trimmer will not work for that. It'll only work for... Your, uh, your rifle cases because it works off the shoulder as opposed to a, a standard lathe trimmer like this one over here, which is gonna work on the case length. So if you're doing pistol, you're gonna wanna have a trimmer that works on the case length. If you're doing a lot of rifle, this trimmer is gonna work great for you. Either way, even if you're using a trimmer like this to trim, you still have the case prep tools. And oh, by the way, they do unscrew. So let's say, for example, you wanna arrange them in a different way they're all standard threads. So you can move this one here, that one there, this one here, whatever arrangements you want. Or again, as I said, there are other tools. If you want to, I've got a set of tools that I bought that, that are in there to allow me to do different things. If you want to uniform all the primer pockets or you want to remove the military crimps, there are tools for that. And because it's a universal set of threads, you can buy tools from other manufacturers and are going to fit. So it really works really well. So far, I have no complaints about this thing at all. Uh, it's, it's amazing. The only complaint I would have is that that is really hard to open once you snap it closed. But that's actually pretty good because I don't lose my tools. Well, there you go. There's the Franklin Arsenal prep center and case trimming tool. I got it from Optics Planet. Check it out. I'll put a link to the, in the description so you can check it out on their website. And do help Optics Planet. They've been supporting our channel since we started. My son and I started this and Optics Planet jumped on board immediately and I've been very, very grateful to them. Well, have a Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful week and wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe.